Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Community Christian Church on this beautiful day. Oh, if we could just have more of these days, huh? But being Ohio, probably snow tomorrow or there'll be a tornado or something, but we're glad it's the way it is today. What a beautiful Sunday. Welcome to Community Christian Church. All of God's children are welcome here, young or old, members of this church or no church, those who believe and those who are searching. We welcome all races, cultures, orientations, and expressions as they are loved by God. So we say, come as you are, as we celebrate God's love, peace, and justice together. Thank you, Scott. You're invited to stand and join us if you'd like. Hymn number 25, verses 1, 2, and 5. Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
seated. Our call to worship this morning is number 189 in the Chalice Hymnal. I will read the small print and you'll read the bold, starting with the bold. This is my commandment. And this is my commandment, love one another. Dwell in me as I in you. Those who dwell in me and I in them bear much fruit. This is my commandment, love one another. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Dwell in my love. This is my commandment. If you heed my commands, you will dwell in my love. As I have heeded the Father's commands and dwell in his love. This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. This is my commandment, love one another. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. This is my commandment, love one another. Thanks be to God. Good morning. We're going to invite the children down front for a children's moment with me. Is it sticky? Yeah, so wherever you fit, I'm so glad you're here today. I don't know. Do you want to come sit with me too? Come here. Come here. I got a seat for you right here. You want to sit right here with me? Well, guys, so today, today is sort of a, it's sort of a, special day and a significant day because actually this is my last Sunday here as the pastor. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about that. We can feel lots of things about that, right? Does anyone have any feelings about that? Do you want to share? Anyone? Yeah? Um, I feel sad that, you're, that, that we're leaving. Yeah, sadness is a feeling. Do you have any feelings about it? I also feel sad because you guys, because you are the greatest pastor ever. Oh, that's super sweet. You've just been one of the greatest kids ever. How about you? A moment. I when when I'm when I when I'm falling and beating, I get mad, super mad, and super sad. Yeah, we can feel mad a little bit sometimes. Do you have any feelings? No? Zora, do you have any feelings? I'm going to feel sad because I'm going to miss my friends. You're going to miss your friends? So we can feel like we might have feelings of remembrance. We might have feelings of sad. We might feel angry. But guess what? One of the parts of, of life is that there are some goodbyes. And I want to spend this time talking about some ways that we can do this goodbye well. So guess what? I did bring a little gift for you, every single person. And I wanna tell you about that, okay? Because these are all tools. Yeah, it's behind me. I'm not hiding it very well, am I? <clears throat> so I wanna tell you a few things about one of the ways that we can feel our feelings in our goodbye and also have a few tools to get through it, okay? So I have a toolbox for each of you. Now first, first things first. One thing in the toolbox is two of these for everyone. What is this? Raise your hand if you know. It's a, it's a friendship bracelet. That's right. I have two friendship bracelets for each of you because guess what? I'm going from being your local friend to your friend who lives in Missouri but we will still be friends. So I'm going to wear these, and I want you to wear these, but something special is on these. Can you tell me, McKenna, 
What letters do you see? Just say the letters. W, W, J, D. Do you know what that stands for? It stands for what would Jesus do? So I want us to remember our friendship, but I also want to remember that I've been your teacher about what would Jesus do in the world, and this can be a reminder for you, okay? So friendship bracelets, number one. Number two in your bag is something called a prayer square. Does anyone know what that is? What's a prayer square? A prayer square is like this little square that has that has all um that has all of the um, that has all of the people's prayers in it. That's right. It has everyone's prayers in it, including mine for you. So when we feel feelings that are sad or we miss each other, I want you to hold this prayer square in your hands and say a prayer and God will connect our hearts. Does that sound good? Okay, so we got friendship bracelets, we got prayer squares. Then I'm sending you a message. I'm giving everyone a message on a rock. It's a rock, but it has words on it. Every rock that you get has a different message for you. So you'll get a special rock from me. And whenever you're wondering what I think or how I'm thinking of you, there's a message for you on this rock, okay? You can hold it real tight and you can't break it. So if you feel angry or you feel any other feelings, you can hold it real tight. The last thing, if we're missing each other's hugs, I have a little friend for each of you. Everyone gets a little friend. This can be a hug for you from me. Ready? Everybody practice. Pretend like you have it. Hug. Okay, it'll be like a hug for me. But all of this is going to be contained in your toolbox. What kind of animal is this? Tiger. Where do tigers live? In the desert. The jungle. In the jungle. Oh. Say it again. In the jungle. In the jungle. In the jungle. But this is a reminder for you of one very important thing. One very important thing. Some tigers live in the desert. That's right. But the ones I'm talking about live in the jungle. I'm going to tell you one. Yes, that's right. Okay, I want to tell you something special. One question, and then I'm going to tell you what. What is their name? You get to name it yourself. But I'm going to tell you something about this jungle animal and this jungle bag. Even though I'm leaving, guess what stays? The church stays. Your friends stay. And the love stays. The love stays. The prayers stay. And I want you to stay. And this is a reminder that we have Vacation Bible School jungle theme that's coming up in June. And I hope that everyone here brings two more friends so they can be a part of this church too. So this is a reminder to stay here at this church and continue to have fun and learn and feel love from this place. Okay? So that's our prayer. Can I pray with you? Okay, repeat after me. Dear God, may these bracelets remind us we are friends. When we hold our prayer square, remind us to pray. When we squeeze our rock, remember to feel grounded. And when we need a hug, We will hug our new stuffy friend. And most of all, God help us to stay engaged at church. At VBS. And worship. Because the church stays strong. Amen. Okay, I'm going to give you your presents now. Let's take one and start walking out. Ready? Here you go. It has a different animal on each Mm -hmm. one. Yeah, we're going. We can sing our way out as you get your present.
you were jealous, there's a few left over. <laughs> but you're going to have to race up here to get one. I can't promise you one for everyone. Well, now is the time in our service where we pray for one another and we pray the requests that you have. And I have a few to start us out. And it's our custom, after each prayer request, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and together we say, hear our prayer. We take requests that the prayer team prays on Tuesdays, and we will pray for you every Tuesday. And if you have one that you don't get a chance to say, I'll remind you to put it on a prayer card at the end and put it in our offering plate. But, Mr. John Madison, I'm glad that you're here today. I'm going to start us out with a prayer for Sharon, who's in the ICU with another mass found on her lungs. Let us pray. God, it is an honor to worship with John today, and we know that it comes at a cost because he's here with us, and Sharon is in the ICU. We pray that our love and compassion and care and remembrance of her surrounds her right now, giving her warmth and strength and making your presence known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Also, as you know, this is my last Sunday with you. I'm going to invite us to pray again, as we have for the last few weeks, for the next pastor that God is preparing for Community Christian Church. Let us pray. God, this is a church that calls people and loves them well, that teaches them with compassion about ministry and how to connect to a community with graciousness and love. We are praying for the next pastor that you are preparing for Community Christian Church. May they be ready to answer the call and ready to love this community so well in partnership in the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. What other prayer requests would you like to lift up? We're going to pray for Caleb and Joshua who lost their mom after a battle with cancer. Let us pray. For Caleb and Joshua, who grieve the loss of their mom. For all those present here this morning who remember that ache because of also losing their mother. We ask for your compassion, for your embrace of love, and for your accompaniment in the journey of grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Brittany Bennett's boss, suffered, uh, her husband, Andy, had a huge motorcycle accident and is barely alive. Let us pray for Andy. God, we lift up Andy, who is in the hospital after a terrible motorcycle accident. Be with him and all who love him. Be with the nurses and doctors caring for him, giving them wisdom and precision and careful attention to help him heal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Chris, I missed her first name. Tell me. Janice. Okay. Chris, it's good to see you here. Thanks for worshiping with us. We're going to pray for um, Chris Bear's um, friend Janice, who's part of the family, who has very significant dementia. Let us pray. God, we lift up Janice, who has lost her memories and is struggling. For Chris's dad, who cares for her and is making tough decisions, we ask for your compassion and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We're going to pray for Marilyn Weaver's wonderful oncologist who has been diagnosed with blood cancer. Let us pray. 
God, we lift up Marilyn's doctor who has cared for so many and carried them through cancer treatment and now faces a fight of his own. We pray for just as much care and attention to come to him as he has offered his patients. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the Canton South, singers and band members who go to Nashville on Wednesday for safety. Hayden, are you going? Okay, so for Hayden particularly, let us pray. God, we lift up prayers for the Canton South musicians and performers who are headed to Nashville. Be a shield of protection around them, and especially for Hayden, we pray that he has fun, that he has a chance to grow, and that he comes back with stories to tell. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Others? Awesome. We prayed for Stacy last week, friend of the Harpleys, and she is home now. Long road of recovery ahead, but let's celebrate and pray for her recovery. God, we thank you for glimpses of your hope and promise in the world, times when our prayers are heard and answered in the way we'd hoped. We give you thanks. We lift up Stacy in the long road of recovery for continued healing and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh, thank you. While Sharon offered prayers for the safe passage as we move to Missouri, I appreciate that so much. Let us pray. God, summer, spring to summer can be a time of transition and change from new classrooms and new grades, moving to a new region, moving to new churches, moving from houses. All of the transitions in our community we lift up to you. I lift up prayers for our family relocating to Missouri and also for all those who are experiencing the change and transition at this time of year. May you be in the midst of it all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. If you have a prayer request that we didn't get a chance to say, there are green cards in the pews. I would love for you to write it down and put it in the offering plate. We pray faithfully through these prayer requests every Tuesday at 10 a.m. We would love to pray for you. Now, let's close this time of prayer for all the unspoken prayer requests in our hearts. Let us pray. Loving and faithful God, we are on this holy ground this place we call church, this place named community, a place where we feel brave enough to say what's hard, like motorcycle accidents or hard diagnoses, things that make us fearful, things that make us sad. We pray for this sacred ground where we also come to learn, where we hear scripture or learn new hymns, and with every new encounter, we learn more about you. God, we are here in this sacred sanctuary giving thanks for a place to come and be true to our name, to love one another through the celebrations and school trips to Nashville, an altar full of children who are ready to keep learning and keep shining for a church that is committed to loving our neighbors as we love ourselves, for a place that taught me how to be a minister, for a place that will continue to be strong, for a future that is bright and promised that you have gone ahead of us, paving a way for this sanctuary, this holy ground, this place named community, to continue to shine your light to continue to be your hands and your feet and your heart in the world. With all of the prayers prayed in this very room, we lift them up to you with great hope, with bold ambition, with clear vision that you are doing a new thing here, that we can perceive it, that it is a promise 
and a light and a hope for the future. Amen. Just one step, God knows our needs. This morning's scripture reading comes from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, 
thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. May God add his blessing to the reading of this scripture. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. About half of you weren't here, and probably a half of you don't remember how it started. But 10 years, seven months, three weeks, and two days ago, it began. It began on a Sunday in September of 2013 when I flew into Canton, Ohio for the second time in my life. And this was your procedure. I'm going to tell you this. You engaged in some hazing. Yes, yes, your bylaws required you to do this. Nonetheless, it was extremely stressful, I can tell you now. Because what are you going to do? You invited me in to preach at one of your worship services before you had decided if I would be your pastor. This was 10 years, seven months, three weeks, and two days ago. And you all gathered, and a lot of you showed up that hadn't been showing up for a while, and you wanted me to preach and lead the worship service. This is part of what you did. And then you dismissed me to another room. This is true and discussed whether or not I'd be a good pastor, and then voted on it, and then brought me back in to tell me how the vote went. Was anyone here on that day? Oh yeah. I wasn't because I was so incredibly stressed, I blacked out. <laughs> because I had never done something like that before. Everyone told me, Preach your best sermon. Everyone said, show them who you are. Tell them what you believe in. Tell them what matters to you. Make sure it's good. It's an audition after all. <sighs> well, I didn't remember that day at all. But a few weeks ago, I went back to look and see what I said. And I realized on that day, I started with a confession. <laughs> I told you I'd been thinking about gardening. I handed out little pieces of paper to some of you about flowers and how to tend to them. I was preaching from Ephesians, which of course is an epistle. It's a letter that Paul wrote from prison to Ephesus, to one of the early churches, to tell them how to do it, how to be a church. And in the letter, and in the scripture, it was about spiritual gifts. The gifts that can come from being a part of a church and a community. And Paul wasn't with them when he wrote this letter, but he wrote this letter to teach them how to be a church. Not because he was there leading, but because they had the gifts within themselves to be a church. And when I read the scripture, it reminded me of a garden. And I told you about this, and I confessed that I'd always wanted a garden. I saw beautiful gardens and tasted tomatoes that others had grown and saw flowers in my neighborhood and envied it, and I wanted it. And so I said, I will have a garden. So I bought the seeds and the 10 bags of mulch and the fertilizer. And then things got busy, and I got distracted. And I confessed to you that day that I had no garden. But I told you that it taught me something about the scripture because the thing about gardens, the thing about planting seeds is you have to tend to them. It has a lot to do with getting down on your knees and getting to work, spending time there and work 
and effort and sweat and commitment. It's not just an idea and it's not just a hope and it's not just a dream. It's about getting your hands dirty down on your knees and doing it day after day after day. But that's how the fruits of the Spirit grew that Paul talked about in that letter to the early church. That's what I learned about gardening and that's what I preach to you. I now know after looking at those notes because I don't remember it at all. That's how we started here. Me saying to you that I wanted to come and invest in this blooming, growing place. That I thought we could get down on our knees together and do good work and make beautiful things grow here. So I went into your little parlor and then all but six of you said, yes. I came back in and that's how it began. Well, today is where my part of this journey ends. And once again, by no decision of mine, but instead the revised common lectionary, we are hearing another scripture that has images of something growing, of the true vine. We're in the Gospel of John, where we've been for a few weeks. And hopefully most of you have been through classes with me or sat here enough and paid attention enough that you know a few things about the Gospel of John, right? It's the only non-synoptic gospel, you know that. That means it doesn't tell the story of Jesus in chronological order, no interest in talking about the manger and all the things that happened to Jesus along the way. The Gospel of John has no parables, no teachings through metaphor, nothing telling the stories of Jesus on the roads in new towns. But one thing that the Gospel of John has, one thing unique to this gospel, are those seven I am statements. They're not hidden stories like parables or metaphors where we have to figure out what is being said. They are direct and clear. I am, I am, I am, I am. The one for today is one of the most beloved. I am the true vine. And God is the vineyard owner. And you are the branches. Now, Jesus is telling this to his disciples in the Gospel of John as his farewell discourse. He's saying goodbye to his disciples. He's preparing them for his departure, and this is what he chooses to teach. In those final days, this is just right before the Last Supper, when we come to our scripture. And so when Jesus was thinking, what could I say, and what could I teach, and what would be the best farewell to the people I love and serve with, and he chose this image. I am the true vine and you are the branches. He was talking to the people who would go on to carry the tradition of being the church and being the hands and feet of Christ. And sometimes when we think about being the church, we get a different kind of image, a solid rock on which I stand, one solid foundation, something stagnant, anchored, unchanging, unmoving. But Jesus didn't choose that. When he was teaching his people, preparing them and saying goodbye, he said, you are a living, blooming thing. To grow, you have to tend to this work. Get on your knees, get dirty, prune when it's time to prune and watch things grow. It's animated, filled with life, and expansion, and hope, and beauty, and blooming things, but it does take work. Jesus didn't say, I am the solid rock on which you'll stand. He said, I'm the vine, and I'm asking you to tend to it, to grow. When I started here in the beginning, my first sermon was about that. Could we grow together? Ending here, it's another image of growth and blooming and what God is asking us to do. And I don't think it's just a coincidence. Because when we think of God's story and the arc of what God has done with people since the beginning, when God created the human being, God didn't put the human being on a solid rock. 
God didn't put the, bil- the being in a structure and called it church and said, manage this. God didn't put the human being in a desert to find a way through the wilderness. God put the human beings in the garden and said, tend to it, help it grow, help it bloom and water it and get your hands dirty and do the work on your knees, tend to the garden. And then in this farewell discourse of Jesus, three days before he leaves, once again, that image from a garden echoing back to the first place human beings ever breathed, reminding us all that the work that God's calling us to isn't to stand still on some solid rock and expect everything to stay the same. It isn't to just buckle down and stay put, upholding traditions and never tending to them. It isn't to anchor ourselves to one person or one music ministry or one pew that's ours to sit in. Instead, from the beginning to the end, there's this image of growing something, tending to something, caring for something, feeding something, getting on your knees, getting your hands dirty, working with something. A reminder that God's message from beginning to end to all of us has been one of work and tending so that beautiful things can grow. Ten years and seven months and three weeks and two days ago, you said yes to this work. You all know me now, but then I'd never been a senior pastor. I'd never pastored through a pandemic. I'd never figured out how you have screens in the sanctuary and show cool videos. I never knew what it was like to live in Ohio. I never knew what it was like to be a part of a staff team that I was supposed to lead. I never knew any of those things. And you said, yes, we believe that this is a place where we can grow together. And you taught me. You tended to me. Thank you. And now, on this final Sunday together, I am asking you to say yes again. Tend to this place. Help it grow. That means getting on your knees and doing the work. It means staying here. I learned early on in my longing for a garden, you can't just let it sit in a pile in the corner and hope one day. From beginning to end, let's do this work that God created you to do, to help things grow and bloom, to show the world about God's love. That's a vine, and you are the branches. So I will be praying for you, for the future, and for the beauty that grows here. And I hope that you say yes Tend to it. Be a part of its growth. Stay and work and pray together on this holy ground. Amen. Good morning. Well, next Sunday, May 5th, is our hunger walk. That's happening right here in Community Christian Church. I believe this is its second year, at least in a row. I know we've done it before. We'll be helping those with food insecurities right here in Stark County. So I hope all of you can be here to either bring food or go for a walk. Hopefully we'll have a beautiful day. This church gives so generously with their heart, time, and money. 
and I want to thank you so very much. Deacons? Let us pray. Lord, may your Holy Spirit keep us attuned to the voices all around us, to those who need us to be bearers of your love and compassion, and may these gifts we give meet those needs. In your holy name of Jesus we pray, amen. When you're called to grow, there's things you need. God knows this. God knows that when you're called to grow, you have to be fed. Your thirst has to be quenched. When you're called to grow, God says, you won't go alone. Here's fuel for the journey, and it's for everyone. We are all invited to this table. You're welcome here whether you believe a little or a lot, whether you've been baptized or not, whether you're a member of this church or no church. You're welcome at this table because it's God's table for all. When we take communion together, you should have one in the front of your pews. If not, we have ushers who can give you one. They're a little hard to open, but the wafer is in the top the juice is in the bottom. We take communion together during the words of institution after the elders pray. So elders, let us pray.
Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us life and for all your blessings we enjoy each and every day. As we eat this bread, instill in us a good attitude and a loving spirit so that others will see your love and grace at work in our lives as we are the branches. God, we are grateful for your abiding presence as we take this cup together. It reminds us once again of your abiding love. May your Holy Spirit open our eyes to the opportunities given us daily. Amen. We remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in an upper room. He took a loaf of bread and blessed it and then broke it for all things that are broken. And Jesus said, take, eat, all of you. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks for it and blessed it. And then gave it to his disciples and said, drink deeply from this cup, all of you. In it is a new covenant in my blood for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time that we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim that Christ lives among us until God comes again. And now I invite you to pray with me the prayer that Jesus taught us. We use debts and debtors. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you're invited to stand and join us in our final hymn, Beautiful Savior, and the words are on the back of the bulletin, maybe even up there, I'm not sure.
before our benediction, I just learned Noel Esway would like to say just a few things. Hang on. Sarah, you have spent 10 years, seven months, three weeks, and two days praying for us. And we cannot let you leave without commissioning you and praying for you. Dear Lord, today we ask you to take the Taylor Peck family into your arms. Change is hard. Transition is hard. Moving is hard. Words cannot express our gratitude for the 10 years we have spent growing together through this journey. Please shelter this family through the hard times as they change their new house into their home, as they meet new people and build a new community. Empower Sarah, Andrew, Felix, and Zora to continue to spread your light and hold them as tight as we would if we were with them. In your name we pray. Okay, well, it might be time for some cookies. Also, I want you all to know that I have a gift for you on your way out, so I don't leave without getting something from me. It's in a little colorful bag. You can pick your color if you're early. Ten of you can get an extra grab bag. <laughs> Next week is the hunger walk. Say yes. Come raise awareness about hunger in Stark County. Show up. Do the work. The week after that is Mother's Day, and we celebrate all daughters. So you should come, say yes. There's a gift for you if you are a daughter of someone. And the work continues. Before our benediction, it has been an honor to be your pastor. I have loved you. I will always love you. I will carry you in my heart. Now receive this blessing. May the God who created you in the image of goodness, the Holy Spirit who breathed into you the breath of life, and Christ who went ahead of us all, teaching us the way of love, send you into this day with peace. Amen.